Hello, my name is Rory, and this is my capstone project. My essential question is, how can I explore my creativity through different styles and medias of art? I chose this project because I wanted to expand my artistic skill set and really get out of my comfort zone. I almost exclusively draw with pencil, so painting using watercolor and acrylics will be a challenge for me. Even though I have taken advanced art classes at Arts Umbrella, I still stick with what I'm most comfortable with, so I really wanted to try new art styles and techniques. This relates to my future career because I plan on selling my art or starting a small business for my art. I would do this on the side while having another job, which would pay a stable wage, but I've always wanted to pursue art either way. So the first piece I will be doing is a watercolor painting in the Art Nouveau style. Art Nouveau was a popular art style in the late 1800s to early 1900s, characterized by organic lines, florals, and vivid colors. It was used in art, architecture, jewelry, and fashion. I chose this style because the details will help me practice with line art and my patience, which is something I really struggle with. I also just think it looks really pretty. So on the right is an example of the style, and as you can see, the details are very intricate. It has a vintage look, but it still feels youthful because of all of the bright colors. This is the, pref the reference I'll be using, and it's by Alfos Mucha, or Muka, a Czech painter from the 1800s who specialized in this style. So before I started the painting, I studied the face and made a sketch. It's important to map out the shapes of the painting before you make a good copy. Here, I really struggled with the hair since the line art is so intricate, and it's easy to, for your eyes to get lost in the details. Here's where my patience was tested. I had to slow down and really study the piece before jumping right in. The painting. First, I traced an outline using pencil just to block out the general shapes of the painting. Then I put a thin layer of watercolor over the dress, skin, and hair. I repeated this process several times to add and build more color and depth. I've learned from a few past experiences that you have to build on top of watercolor or the paper will rip if you do it all at once. I added the flowers as well. Then I added contrast and shadows to the fabric and the details using pencil crayons and outlined everything in black pencil. To finish the piece, I added a light yellow paint in the background. Results. Some things I struggled with were the paint turning out blotchy in some areas. The water created ripples in the paper which the pigment sat in and made some areas darker than others. Some details on the dress were also too intricate for the amount of time I had, so I had to simplify it. The tape also ripped on the paper a bit as well. These are pretty minor issues, but now I have the knowledge I need to perfect my technique for next time. Second piece, abstract. While abstract art may look simple or incomprehensible to some, it holds a significant meaning for the artist. The artist may use colors, shapes, composition, and tone to represent a feeling or place, or it may represent an object. Abstract art often leaves less to the eyes and more to the mind. It is made to be analyzed. Why I chose it. I actually have been avoiding abstracts because it intimidates me. Instead of relying on specific details and visual stories to tell a story, you have to rely on shapes, colors, and composition. So since it's so simplistic, you have to be very specific in how you paint it or your viewers won't understand what you're trying to say. So the abstract piece will probably be the, mo the most technically challenging for me. The process. I wanted the piece to resemble a beach, so I used bright neon colors that reminded me of summer. First I painted the canvas yellow to resemble sand. Then I wanted to create a distinct line between the water and land to symbolize two different worlds. So I painted a red line diagonally across the canvas. The blue swirls represent beach umbrellas from a bird's eye view. Then I added grass and pink flowers on one side and shells and waves on the other. I made sure to keep it as simple as possible while still making it recognizable to the viewer. 
It was much easier for me to use acrylic paint than watercolor since the paint was thicker and easier to manipulate. Results. I wanted to keep the piece as symbolic and abstract as possible while still having all the elements of a beach. I think it turned out really good for an abstract piece. At first I disliked it because I wasn't used to making art like this, but I think it resembles the style well. Challenges. Like I said, I struggled with the art style itself and keeping things simple but still interesting. I struggled with simplifying the piece because I'm used to more intricate pieces and relying on pure shapes and colors to bring the piece together is new, new to me. However, I think for my first attempt at abstract art, it came out better than expected. I also didn't have access to high quality paints and canvases, but it wasn't too much of an issue. I definitely learned a lot from this one. Anatomy study. Studying human anatomy is crucial for proportionate artwork. It guides how fabric sits on a figure and makes the drawing process quicker and easier. I personally struggle with anatomy and try to avoid it, but this project is all about trying new things to add to my skill set. It is usually done using a live model or a reference photo with charcoal or pencil. I chose to do this because it's important in other careers like fashion design, which I'm also interested in. These are the two references I'm using. I chose these because one shows motion and one shows a static pose. Sketch. First I created balls for the joints and lines for the limbs. This creates a basic skeleton for the drawing. This also makes it easier to create the pose of the character than if you just started with a full fleshed body. After I started outlining the body, then I added depth and dimension with shading and fabrics. And this is the result. Challenges. I struggled with proportions and the sizes of limbs. As I said before, I've always struggled with anatomy, so I knew I would struggle with this piece. The graphite also, also smudged a bit, which made the shading less effective. Conclusion. I chose this project to help develop my artistic skills by creating art using media and styles I've never tried before. This project helped introduce me to new styles I enjoy and will continue to expand upon in the future. I learned useful skills like how to properly use watercolor, analyze abstract art, and even some art history. And I also learned more about myself. My patience levels have improved, and I know how my personal art style translates to other art styles. I struggled with painting techniques and proportions the most. Thank you so much for watching. I learned a lot about myself through this project that will help me in my future art endeavors.